It's a long-standing tradition now that almost every GPU generation, Nvidia does something misleading, anti-consumer, or borderline scammy. And if you thought almost two years into the GeForce 40 series they were going to break tradition, sadly you were wrong. So what do I mean by this? Well, as an example, if we go back to the much-loved GeForce 10 series, at least I loved that series anyway, I think most were fond of parts like the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti, but as good as those higher-end models were, Nvidia were keen to screw over budget gamers with the infamous DDR4 version of the GT1030. You see, the GT1030 was released in May of 2017 with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It was a very modest product by all accounts with just 48 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So it was no monster, but it was usable and at just $70 US, it wasn't exactly expensive. But a year after release, Nvidia executed one of the scummiest bait and switches the GPU market has ever seen by arming some GT1030s with desktop DDR4 memory, which reduced the memory bandwidth to a mere 16.8 gigabytes per second. It was extremely difficult for buyers to work out which model they were actually getting, and worse still, the vast majority didn't even know that there were two models to begin with, as they were both called the GT1030. In short, the DDR4 version was on average 40% slower. 40%, and that was for the same money. It was complete madness. There was a reasonable amount of backlash, but that didn't mean Nvidia had learnt their lesson. Though they did keep things fairly legit for the Turing generation, but we still saw some models receive multiple variants under the same name. It wasn't until Ampere, so the GeForce 30 series, that Nvidia went back to its old ways, once again releasing multiple models under the same name, with the quietly released follow-up models being worse than the original. Firstly, we got the 8GB version of the RTX 3060, a year and a half after the original, which initially came with 12GB of GDDR6 memory, using a 192-bit wide memory bus for a bandwidth of 360GB per second. The 8GB model though, that forced a reduction in bus width down to 128-bit, reducing the bandwidth by 33% to just 240 gigabytes per second, and as a consequence, it was often much slower. Both models were called the GeForce RTX 3060, but the newer 8 gigabyte version was on average 15% slower, and we saw examples where it was up to 26% slower. And worse still, the 8 gigabyte model was typically only slightly cheaper, it was around a 5% saving for an average of 15% worse performance. So in terms of value, the 8 gigabyte model was terrible. But the real issue was the fact that most people didn't even know there were multiple versions of the same product. So if and when they researched RTX 3060 performance, they were almost certainly looking at the 12 gigabyte models. But when it came time to purchase, they might have gone with the very slightly cheaper 8 gigabyte version, not realizing the mistake that they were making. So now we get to the GeForce 40 series. And as I said, despite a few trash tier products like the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, which was $400, and then the $500 asking price for the 16 gigabyte model, though that was eventually slightly discounted. But apart from all that, the series has been scam free, which is always nice to see. Well, of course, that is until now, because NVIDIA has quietly released a new version of the GeForce RTX 4070. So, uh, don't know if you can see that on the box, but yeah. A new version that is downgraded, unfortunately. It's only a very small downgrade, and, well, the price remains the same. And for those of you who don't know, about a year and a half ago now, NVIDIA did release the GeForce RTX 4070 for $600 US. And it came armed with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X 21 gigabits per second memory. And that resulted in a memory bandwidth of 504 gigabytes per second. And this, in our opinion, was one of the better GeForce 40 series products at launch. And while we certainly weren't blown away with it, at $600, it was actually, again, one of the better value products. Since then, it has been replaced at the $600 US price point by the 4070 Super, and that has dropped the original 4070 down to $550. So it's a $50 discount, not too bad, I suppose. But potential RTX 4070 buyers now face a new problem because the model you buy might not come with GDDR6X memory. Quietly announced by Nvidia last month, the GDDR6 models have started hitting shelves 
So we bought one for about $900 Australian, the same price as the GDDR6X models. Now, the good news is this model has only been downgraded ever so slightly with 20 gigabits per second memory, reducing the memory bandwidth to 480 gigabytes per second. It's a 5% reduction. So look, this won't massively impact performance, but it is still a downgrade and the product name still remains the same. And truth be told, the vast majority of consumers, they don't know what kind of memory the RTX 4070 is meant to come with. GDDR6 or GDDR6X. And I'm willing to bet without looking it up online, the majority of you didn't know either. And why would you? You just trust that you're getting what Nvidia advertised originally a year and a half ago. But sadly, that is no longer the case. So first things first, let's see how the GDDR6 and GDDR6X versions of the RTX 4070 compare with a few gaming benchmarks. And as usual, we will be testing with our AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system. And I've updated the results of both the 4070 models. So we have the exact data that we can compare between them all, updated drivers and all that sort of stuff. And the rest of the cards will just be included sort of as a reference point. Now, the original RTX 4070 results are based on the found position model, which is clocked almost a percent, about a percent lower than the Gigabyte WinForce OC version that I've purchased here. So the clock speeds are really much the same. The key difference here is going to be the difference in memory frequency or memory throughput going from 21 gigabits per second down to 20 gigabits per second. So let's go check out some results. I'm not going to spend ages on this data, it's more just to validate the changes. So we'll go over a few individual games at 1440p, and then check out the 12 game average data at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. So in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty at 1440p, we're looking at a 5% performance reduction, which, spoiler alert, is as big as the performance drop off gets. In this example, that does make the RTX 4070 now just 3% faster than the much cheaper Radeon RX 7700 XT. We're looking at a 4% reduction in Dying Light 2, dropping from 89 FPS on average to 85 FPS. A small reduction, but that does mean the RTX 4070 is now slower than the 7800 XT. Then finally, the last game we'll look at is a Plague Tower Requiem, and here we're seeing another 4% reduction in performance, dropping from 81 FPS to 78 FPS. So just a few frames lost there. But again, this moves the RTX 4070 closer to the much cheaper 7700 XT. Okay, so at 1080p, we saw on average a 4% performance reduction, making the GDDR6 version of the RTX 4070 just 6% faster than the 7700 XT, despite costing a little over 40% more. So that's not good. The situation at 1440p sees the GDDR6 version drop just 3% of its original performance, but again, that moves it closer to the 7700 XT. Then at 4K, we're looking at just a 2% reduction in performance, as memory bandwidth is no longer the primary bottleneck. Then for those of you interested in power usage, when looking at total system consumption, the Gigabyte OC model consumed a few watts less than the Founders Edition for a few less frames. So in short, power consumption remains very similar. So the good news is the GDDR6 version isn't much slower, as expected given that we're only looking at a 5% reduction in memory bandwidth. The bad news is though, it's still slower. And while those of you who buy the wrong model, you're not getting royally screwed in terms of performance, you're still getting screwed out of some performance. And after all, many of you seem willing to pay a small premium for the OC models that only give you about a two to 5% performance boost out of the box. So paying the same amount for a two to 5% performance loss probably won't sit well with many of you. In fact, I've got to admit, I wasn't quite sure how upset I should be about this uh, move from NVIDIA. Now look, my initial reaction uh, to stuff like this is always very negative. Uh, rubs me the wrong way. I suppose for a lack of a better term, it just pisses me off. NVIDIA advertised the RTX 4070 to have 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X memory, and that is what it should have. If availability of that memory becomes an issue down the track, the options are either to discontinue the product or re-release it under a new name. Therefore, on behalf of consumers everywhere, I am pissed off with this product. It's just another anti-consumer scummy move from Nvidia. But before I went ranting and raving about how bad the GDDR6 version of the RTX 4070 is, 
I thought I'd ask you guys what you think about it, because if no one cares, should I even bother? So a few days ago, I created a poll on the Harbour Box community tab asking you just how annoyed we, and I suppose you are, with this situation. And about 70% of you said that you're extremely annoyed, or we should be extremely annoyed, however you want to interpret the way I wrote it. Uh, but yeah, 70% extremely annoyed with the situation, so that is a majority. And then a further 20% of you said that you're more annoyed than you'd like to be. And then there was just 8% that said they were a little bit annoyed, but really it's not too much of a big deal. And then a mere 2% claimed they're not annoyed at all. I also made it clear in that poll that the performance has only regressed by 2 to 4%. So it's not a big deal in terms of the performance loss. And armed with the facts, it seems like the overwhelming majority of you are annoyed with this move by NVIDIA. And really, I think so you should be. The fact that both models have the same name, it's unclear as to which one's which, mostly because the majority of people don't even know if the... Well, they don't know what memory this card is probably meant to come with, whether it be GDDR6 or GDDR6X, or that there are even two variants to begin with, so they should be on the lookout for a difference in memory. And to cap it all off, the GDDR6 version of this card costs the same amount as the GDDR6X version. And on that note, it is important to note that NVIDIA is not giving those of you who go with this GDDR6 version, whether you do so willing or not, but they're not giving you a discount. They're just providing a, well, what is a cheaper to produce product and then pocketing the difference. So the only positive in our opinion, I say this somewhat sarcastically, but also... Um, somewhat thankful, is the fact that NVIDIA is not rolling consumers harder, like what they did with the GT 1030, because they seemingly are able to get away with it. I'm also fairly confident that what NVIDIA is doing here could be deemed as illegal in some regions, but then I suppose they've been doing this exact same thing for years now without repercussions, so I expect them to continue with these bait and switch tactics well into the future. Also, it isn't just NVIDIA who does this. Though I think probably the worst examples that we can point to are GeForce products, but AMD is also happy to mislead their customers with dodgy product names. Same also goes for Intel. You know, nearly knocked this very precious, valuable graphics card over. That would have sucked. Oh uh, yeah, but we saw AMD do a similar, well, I don't know if it's a similar thing, but they released a dodgily named Ryzen 7 5700. Uh, so yeah, my point is, I guess we're just, we're not just going after NVIDIA on this. Like we realize that, well, all the brands do this and we have called them out when they do it. But if you somehow just watch this video and think we're just criticizing NVIDIA, yeah, that's not the situation. Anyway, I don't think there's too much more to say about this product. I don't like it. Same name, scummy, anti-consumer behavior. But yeah, we've seen it time and time again. We've pointed it out. Uh, it doesn't look like it's something that's gonna end anytime soon without significant pushback from the community. But really, the right thing to do here if they didn't want to uh, provide GDDR6X memory on this product as they advertised would be to just discontinue it and move on with the, the 4070 Super or rename it, re-release it as a different product, uh, preferably with a slight or somewhat of a discount. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. If you'd like to support this kind of testing, us buying dodgy, scummy products to let you guys know, then well, yeah, you can support us by signing up to our Patreon account or joining with the YouTube members tab. We've added the little join button, so you can click that. A couple of perks there. You can click on it to, to find out what they are if you're interested. And we also have an exclusive Discord server for members, a couple of other stuff. So yeah, anyway, check it out if you're interested. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.